away we go. Right. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you all for coming. Um, it's fantastic to see you. Um, really, this is about seven tips for improving email marketing, hopefully, um, which will help you, hopefully. I mean, um, I guess I guess it's the question is why are you here? Um, I don't think any of you are brand new to email marketing um, and wanting to know the best way to go about it. I'm I'm guessing that most of you who are here this afternoon have tried it, been using it, um, either not getting the success they want, or they will just want to do it a bit better, or they just want to improve what they're doing. Um, well, you're in the right place because that's what this is all about. It's not a trading session. It's not a sales pitch for any particular platform, um, but it will help you to use whichever tool you've already selected, um, with one exception, which I will go into. And given that I'm recording it for other people to listen to, we'll, we'll kind of go through all of that as well. Um, if you're already doing it, what success have you had? Um, how do you measure success? Do you actually measure success or do you just send out newsletters and, and hope that people are reading them. Um, open rates, well, we can talk about open rates. Open rates are not really a very good indicator these days of engagement. So um, I can open something on my phone and it recounts as an open, but I'm very unlikely actually to have read anything longer than a couple of lines on my phone. And uh, you probably find if people are opening it on Outlook, I've had some amazing open rates where I've had people opening something I've sent 30 or 40 times. And in fact, it's just it's popping up in their reading pane in Outlook. So that's that's not very helpful and is not really what open rates are, are all about. So um, depends on your goals. Why are you sending out emails, email marketing and emails in the first place? Uh, I mean, I used to be guilty of this, you know, you think you need to keep in touch with people, you send out stuff and, and hope that they're reading it, and in fact, unless you're sending out the right content to the right people at the right time, um, you're probably actually wasting your time and not really um, getting the returns that you should you should be getting. So let's just kick off. Um, so why are you here? Uh, hopefully to learn some more. Um, what's not working for you? Um, then we'll have we'll have a look at uh, seven tips to actually improve your email marketing. If you've got any questions, if you pop them in the chat box, if I don't catch them as we're going along, then I will catch them at the end. Um, I just find that if you open it up to and open unmute all the mics, it's it's too noisy and there's too much background noise and it's it's not really helpful for anybody. It's quite annoying, and somebody's phone always starts to ring. Um, and, as, and we can have some Q&A at the end if you're interested in that as well. So really, the, a lot of the, what I'm going to be talking about is, is about the, 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 the buzzword deliverability. Um, so you might be setting up and sending out hundreds of emails, but how many of them are actually getting to your target inboxes at all? Um, so your open rates may not be reflected correctly because you might see, um, you might think that you're sending to a whole pile of people who are never actually getting the the option to open it. Um, so we'll we'll have a little bit of a chat about that. Um, so yeah, seven top tips. There are obviously lot. There's lots more to it than that. Um, but we've only got half an hour, and I will try to keep it to finishing at uh, three thirty. Um, and these are seven things that if you do them, then you should see an improvement in, in the engagement on your emails. Um, right, so tip number one. OK, tip number one is don't use Outlook. Um, I don't think any of you guys would be using Outlook. I, I still receive Outlook emails from people um, in the guise of newsletters. I have some some people that send me Outlook emails, and, and there's a whole pile of reasons for not using Outlook. Um, the main reasons are, one is measurement. Um, you can't tell who's open stuff. Uh, read receipts are notoriously useless. Um, and uh, if you've got other aspects to your email, so you've got downloads or um, links, then there's no way of telling who's clicked on a link. And as we'll see later on, that's the sort, of th the sort of thing that you want to build into your email marketing to, to actually help it and make it work a bit better. 
Um, the other problem is that if you send large volumes of email out through your own Outlook system, um, your own email using your own domain or your own ISP, you run a risk of being flagged as spam. And di different ISPs have got different thresholds, and some of them um, are actually quite scarily low. Um, and you can find yourself getting blacklisted, and that goes around like wildfire. And I've gone into places where they've come to me because they want to do email marketing because they've had experience of this once. Um, and once you're blacklisted, it takes quite a lot of time and effort to get yourself unblacklisted, during which time you can't send and receive email. So um, I don't suggest you do it. So that's the, that's the main two reasons. There are all sorts of other reasons. You can design, you can have much more whizzy designs if you use one of the platforms for um, the um, email service providers. Yeah, I just realized I, I used a, a three-letter acronym when I didn't tell you what it meant. Um, there are all sorts of things. There's MailChimp, there's Constant Contact, there's Acti Marketing. There's a whole pile of them out there. And they all allow you to design something nice, nice HTML mail, which looks good. Um, that's not that's not everything that is, you know, that's, that's important. Um, the message and the content is clearly important. But you probably do want to make something attractive that people will, will look forward to and want to open. Um, there are still... There are times when you want to something send something that looks a bit more like a a more um, plain Outlook style email um, without too many graphics in it, and you can do that with any other platform anyway. Um, but you do um, you don't really want to use Outlook. The other benefit of most of these platforms, um, in fact, not, if not all of them, is that they will build in unsubscribe options for you, which keeps you on the right side of the law. Um, there's nothing more infuriating than repeatedly replying to somebody's email saying, take me off your list, and they don't do it. Uh, with an ESP, then, if, if they unsubscribe, um, you, you just won't be able to send to them again unless you get a different email address. So uh, oh, for all of those reasons, don't recommend you use Outlook for email marketing. Use an email service provider. As I say, I'm not here to recommend one in particular, but if anybody wants to have a chat about that offline, um, either at the end or, or some other time, then I'd be happy to have a chat with you about that. Um, just a quick note on design and, and graphics and things like that. I, I have had people who have had something designed by a designer, <laughs> um, which is perhaps a, a, a nice um, image with all their uh, with nice pictures and all the rest of it, and they load it up as one image into their email and send it. Um, that really is not deliverable at all. It's seen as very, very spammy um, and really not good practice at all. So um, another don't do. Don't really want to start with lots of don't do's, but my second one is also a don't. Don't buy lists. Um, there are probably some good lists out there, but there's a lot of really, 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 really poor lists out there. As you will know, if you actually receive email, um, I get every day, because I supposedly opted into some list somewhere which has been sold on three million times, I get all sorts of rubbish in my inbox. Um, and that's, that's just a reflection of the quality of lists. Um, on the rare occasion, I did purchase a long a list of, a little while ago. Well, it was about probably about three or four years ago now, and I could see just by looking at it that it was out of date. Um, so I'm I'm not a fan of lists. The other problem with lists is that actually um, once <laughs> there's all sorts of tools out there and and monitoring tools out there. And they can tell when you're sending to lists, and they can tell when you're sending to lists with high unsubscribe rates. So um, it actually, again, affects the deliverability of your own um, emails. And again, can actually affect things arriving in um, your contacts, inboxes, even people that have opted in. So um, really, really, really don't like um, buying lists. So the idea is to build your own. Um, make sure you're doing that properly as well. Um, 
don't go to a networking do and uh, just harvest the delegate list. We've all had those as well. Um, if you collect cards from people, make sure that you actually ask them if they would like to be contacted um, and put on your email marketing list. I actually build it into an email, a follow-up email and say, it was great to meet you. If you'd like to receive my marketing emails, then click on this link here to opt in. Um, people actually like it. They don't really like just finding themselves on lists anymore. There's a lot of people really quite resistant to that. Um, so. It's, it's just much better practice and it builds a much stronger relationship in the first place. If you have a web shop or a, another, a, another way of collecting things online, don't just assume if somebody's placed an order that you can email them uh, as much as you like. Ask them to opt in. Don't do the old uh, double negative opt out. Um, that's no longer really seen as being acceptable. So make sure that you're making it clear that um, if they're going to receive marketing materials that they've actually chosen to do so. If you go to a trade show, you can obviously collect cards there. Um, you can ask people um, you know, if they want to give their information so that they can uh, receive a, a white paper or a PDF or an ebook or something afterwards. If you've got a lot of, uh, if you're business to consumer and you've got a lot of um, people coming to a, a trade stand who, for example, wouldn't have business cards, you could have something like a tablet with you and actually ask them to put their own details in. Um, that could work quite well as well and get them to opt in to receive a prize or a prize draw or something like that. Okay, so that's lists um, and building your own. So say we're only scratching the surface with this, but that's quarter past already, so I'm moving on. Um, the third thing is use a database. Um, put some form of database behind your list. Um, and I put the word segment in there. Just make sure that you can actually tell one contact from another and it's not just a big address book. Uh, is this person a current customer? Is it a prospect? Is it a lead? Is it an ex-customer? Is it a networking contact that just wants to be kept in touch? Is it an introducer? Who is this person? Um, so that when you come on to, when we come on to the next point, which is um, relevance, uh, you can make sure you're delivering relevant material. Um, one of the problems with, with something like MailChimp, and, and I know a lot of people use MailChimp largely because it's free, uh, and it's wonderful, and you can put all these, create all these different lists. One of the problems with it is that if I create a list called leads, and I do my, lots of lead nurturing, which is a fantastic expression, we love it. Um, if I do lots of lead nurturing and they become a customer, then they're not necessarily going to get taken off that lead list unless you actively do so. So the next time you send to, to the lead list, they're going to be getting something inappropriate. Um, so if you've got a database behind your um, email marketing platform that makes sure that the lists are at least synchronized and that when it, you're sending to a lead list, they are still leads and you're sending, sending to a customer list of real customers, um, that it's all it's all correctly managed. So um, that is one of the issues and one of the reasons why using a database behind your email marketing system makes a whole pile of sense. Um, so as I said, we don't want to be sending irrelevant content. We want to be sending relative re relevant content. Um, if I've just bought a washing machine from you, I probably won't buy another one this week. So, you know, don't ask me to. Uh, but I might be interested in a toaster or I might be interested in an offer on washing powder. So um, it is all about having got, you know, having got a database, having segmented it, having made sure that we know who this person is, that we're sending them content that's actually relevant to them at that moment in time. Um, and that really is that brings me on to something called the buyer's journey. Um, we used to talk about the sales funnel, and in fact, we still can talk about the sales funnel. There's nothing wrong about talking about sales funnel. But there is also this other way of looking at um, things, thinking, thinking now of the fact that people are much more active buyers, um, which makes our, our task of selling to them. Um, we shouldn't be, really. We shouldn't be selling to them. We should be helping them to buy. Um, this comes from HubSpot. Um, you'll find that people, which, people that we might call lead, uh, leads would be in the awareness stage. 
um, prospects potentially in the consideration and moving into the decision stage and then ultimately they become customers. At each point then they have different needs um, and you should be communicating with them in different ways. Um, so just make sure that you're, you're actually thinking about uh, where, this, where each contact is in this buyer's journey and therefore what the appropriate um, information is that you should be, should be sending to them. Um, what other thing that is actually very, very helpful is to think about buyer personas. I've actually put the, um, I don't know if you can read it, I can send it out to you afterwards. Um, I've put the definition up from HubSpot. This is really where you get down to thinking about who is your ideal customer. Understand the type of customer that you actually want to attract and make sure that the communication that you're sending is actually appropriate to those people. Um, start with your existing customer base. Who's an ideal client? How often do they buy from you? What sector are they in? What if you're business to business? Um, what other attributes do they have if you're business to consumer? You know, it might be geographical. It might be the sort of car they drive. It's all that kind of good stuff of actually understanding what your ideal customer actually physically looks at looks like and it's a really useful exercise um, something I've started to do as well to sit down and actually try and visualize what your ideal customer looks like um, you might have more than one uh, depending whether you have different sec sectors that you send to uh, sell to or whether you might have um, different products and services for different sectors so have a think about buyer personas and think about who that ideal client might be um, and I think what I'll probably do is uh, run a webinar just on that um, as well, because I think there's a there's a whole half hour in there just on buyer personas probably. So we've decided we've got our platform, um, we've got a list, we know exactly who they are, um, we know where they are in the buyer's journey. We're now actually getting to the stage of sitting down and writing our content. Um, the shorter the better, I've put. Um, short and sweet, use downloads and links. There's nothing worse than getting a great, long, huge, unreadable, particularly on your phone, um, email. But even on um, even on a on a laptop or whatever, if you're trying to read it, you can you know you do kind of lose the will to live. the The, the ideal situation is that you have short paragraphs in your email, um, and then you build in links or create downloads. So if somebody's interested in a particular product, they get a little taster within the um, email itself, and then they can click on a button and download a brochure. Um, they're going to be much happier with that. Or you can give them a link um, to an area of your website. There's, there's, a, there's a whole pile of advantages to that as well, which you can no doubt see given where we started. If you are selling me, um, I don't know, um, cars and I click on a link for a Ferrari uh, to, to look at more information, then immediately if you're using a platform that will give you that information, you can see that I am somebody who's probably you know, pretty much ready to buy. So you've now got something that's measurable, you've got a call to action, it's measurable, and you've now started to create a call list. So you've now got something that you can really work with, rather than just sending out emails that go into the ether, never to be seen again. Um, links to your website can be useful as well. You can give people exclusive content, um, again, because you know who's clicked on the link. So um, if you send them through to a part of your website that's not, um, accessible through the normal navigation, then you know, private pages or whatever, they can see it because they've got the link through the email and therefore you know <laughs> who it is that's actually clicked through. Again, incredibly useful stuff. Um, you could give special offers, um, exclusive content, all that kind of stuff. So um, think about downloads and links and using those. Don't use a salesy style. Um, spam filters, again, that's a, that's a whole other topic. Um, I'll send you a link as well uh, in, uh, afterwards in uh, the follow-up email. There's uh, our friend Donald Trump <laughs> has had a spectacular email marketing fail 
um, for all sorts of reasons. There's the three main reasons, as you will see in the, the, in the link I send you. But um, one of the problems is that he's, he wrote it in the sort of um, language that, as one of the articles I read said, it looks a bit like one of the Nigerian princes trying to get you, you know, to say he's got lots of money for you. Um, I'm sure nobody here on this call is going to use that kind of language, but you know all the kind of um, free and in, in um, the word free and block capitals and exclamation marks and stars and all that kind of thing. Spam the spam catchers absolutely hate all that kind of stuff. Um, if you can't write stuff yourself, then there's a lot of people out there, and I've got at least two that I can recommend um, are really really good copywriters and it's very probably worth your uh, money to invest in using a copywriter if a you don't really have the time to do it and b you just you, know, you need a little bit of help in terms of writing good copy so um, but there is a point to it it's not just about making it um, nice to read and good English and all the rest of it. Actually, again, about that deliverability thing. If it's seen as being horrible and salesy, it will not get through to even people that have opted in on your database. Um, right, what's the next one? Make it measurable. So we have already talked about that a little bit. And um, we have talked about le um, links and all the rest of it. Um, Really, the whole point of it is to, to understand, even if you're sending out, I always say this, even if you're sending out an email to 20 people and 12 of them open it um, and click through and, and actually read the content that, that you want to deliver to them, it's so much more worth your while to do that than to send out a massive email to 10,000 people where you've got a tiny open rate and you risk the idea being uh, flagged as spam. Um, so make it measurable by embedding these downloads and links and by and understanding exactly who you're sending to in the first place. Really, um, it does pay dividends and you will see much, much more success in terms of engagement and uh, sales as well in terms of what you're trying to do. Uh, by making it measurable as well, make sure you've actually got the goals in mind about what you want to do and why you're sending out email marketing in the first place. Um, think about that buyer's journey. Um, think about whether it's a piece of content which is informational, which is perhaps for those people at the you know just at the awareness stage. They want to know about the products and services you offer, but they don't necessarily want to be sold sell sold at um, and making sure that you're moving them through uh, the the process and, and getting them um, into into you know the sort of situation where you might actually be able to to engage with them and make a sale so make sure that um, you can actually opt in again you can get people to opt in for all sorts of different things through emails um, through content on your website um, through social media, all these kind of things, um, and actually start to get some stats and information out of it. Then you can start to work out your sales process in terms of how many people do I have to have at each stage in order to get a certain value of um, sales at the end of the process, once you know what the, a, an average sale actually costs you. Um, that's 25 past, I think. Um, I'll have a look and see whether there's any comments and questions in there. <laughs> Just a lull from Carl. Um, was that the website bit? Presumably. <laughs> um, any other questions from anybody? Um, if you want to take this further, and this will also be in the follow-up email, um, I can run one to work, one workshops or one to many workshops in your business if you've got more than one person. Um, on how to build lists, on how to understand buyer personas and the buyer's journey, and on databases and segmentation. And happy to um, have a free call, free phone call, um, to chat about where you are in your business and, you know, how I can, how I might be able to help you. So um, there is a link which I'll send out to you. And if you're interested in applying for a free session, then uh, if you just click on the link, then that will be do it. That will be good to do it. Uh, 
no problem, Carl. And uh, oh, you were laughing at Donald Trump. Yeah, I'll send you the link, Carl, and you can have a really good laugh at it. Um, thank you very much, everybody, for coming along. I've actually finished slightly early for once. That has to be some sort of uh, record. Um, I shall now finish the recording and. Uh, if anybody, I can open up the mics as well, but um, if nobody's got any further questions, then we can finish that for today. But thank you very much for coming, and I uh, hope you found it useful, and um, I'll hopefully see you all very soon. Thank you. <laughs>